Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today's webinar. My name is Stephen Chambers, and I'm going to be helping you navigate through Chevron's open enrollment this fall. We're going to be talking about some of the common mistakes we see Chevron employees make and how to best optimize your open enrollment process. My name is Stephen Chambers, and I'm a certified financial planner and chartered financial analyst. I serve as the next gen director at Houston's FPA chapter, and I'm also a Rice University CFA prep course instructor. I focus on holistic financial planning, um, especially for Chevron professionals and helping them better understand their benefits. Our firm, Willis Johnson & Associates, is an award-winning financial planning firm. We specialize in helping professionals and executives at leading energy companies optimize and make the most out of their company benefits. Right? We offer advice that you can trust for financial security both now and wherever life takes you. Some of the things that make us different, first and foremost, is that we are a registered investment advisory firm, which only 12% of firms in our industry are registered investment advisory firms, and which means that we are a fiduciary, which means the advice that we give is always in the best interest of our clients. We also have an emphasis on tax planning. Uh, we have an in-house team of CPAs that will file and prepare clients' tax returns. And as I mentioned before, we specialize and company benefits for Chevron, Shell, and BP. We're going to dive into a lot of fairly detailed strategies today. If you have any questions on anything we cover, please include them in the pop-up survey following the webinar. We are always happy to follow up with you and answer any questions that you may have. Okay, so what's on today's agenda? Well, first off, we'll talk about open enrollment. When is it? Which medical plan should you choose for your family? the differences between the HSA and FSA. We'll talk about short-term and long-term disability. Do you need it? And then life insurance. Ultimately, how much life insurance do you need based off the stage of life you're in? And then next steps. So Chevron's open enrollment date is October 16th through October 27th. So mark it on your calendars because this is when you can make changes to your health benefits, insurance, and so on and so forth. All right, which medical plan should you choose? Well, at Chevron, you have four main options. What are they? You have the PPO, which is by and far the most common. Then uh, the high deductible health plan. Chevron also offers these other two plans, the HMO uh, and the high deductible health plan, the basic version. The most common types that we see uh, are the PPO and the high deductible plan. The HMO is, doesn't have as much flexibility or options. And then the high deductible basic, it offers a, a the highest possible deductible, $10,000 uh, with the lowest cost. So oftentimes when we work with clients, these are the two that we we talk about and recommend. Okay, so I wanna introduce to you guys today the two couples that we will be referencing throughout our presentation. So both Bob and Anna and Trish, Trisha and Ryan are 55 years old. Right. Bob and Anna are on the Chevron PPO plan. They're currently not using the FSA and they only see physicians on an annual basis as needed. In other words, they're in great shape. They're in good, they're good health conditions. Contrast that with Trisha and Ryan. They're currently on Chevron's high deductible health plan. They are not contributing to the HSA and they have chronic medical conditions. So they regularly view the doctor. Okay, so as I mentioned, PPO, the high deductible plan, those are the two most common plans. Let's dive into the details on each of those. The PPO has a higher premium, so it has a higher monthly cost. And it, by trade-off, it has a lower deductible. So less money needs to come out of pocket before your coinsurance kicks in. Lower out-of-pocket maximums, you cannot contribute to an HSA, you can contribute to an FSA. And I know those are two terminologies that people use interchangeably, but they're different. And we'll dive into those differences here in a moment. And then ongoing health costs and medications, right? So that's what this PPO plan covers. Contrast that to the Chevron high deductible plan, has the, that which has a lower premium. So your monthly premiums are lower. The trade-off though, is you have a higher deductible. Just comparing the two, let's say you're on the family plan, the deductible for PPO is 3,000 versus 6,000 for the high deductible. Higher out-of-pocket maximums, 
you are eligible for the HSA plan. And mainly when people are, we call healthy and they're just maintaining the health, they're seeing the doctors for preventative care, that's what's best. We typically recommend people to enroll in the high deductible plan if you're in this maintaining health uh, phase of your life. So if you recall, um, Bob and Anna, they're in pretty good health, but they're currently on the PPO plan. So after talking with them, understanding their goals and, and, and situation better, we did recommend switching from the PPO to the health, high deductible health plan, primarily because they're in great condition health-wise. Trish and Ryan, if you recall, they have um, chronic medical conditions. They're currently on a high deductible plan. So we recommended them to switch to the PPO plan. Biggest takeaway, guys, when you're deciding between PPO and high deductible, how's your health situation? Are you in a chronic situation or are you mainly in just maintenance mode when you're going to the doctor for preventative care purposes? Now let's dive into the details. I mentioned the HSA and the FSA. Well, at Chevron, the FSA and this HCSA, it's Healthcare Savings Account, these terms are used interchangeably. What are the differences? The HSA, again, in order to be on the HSA account, you need to be enrolled in the high deductible plan, either the, the core high deductible plan or the basic. Any contributions that you make to an HSA are tax deductible. The contributions that you make can be invested, and those contributions also are tax deferred. So you're not paying taxes on the growth of those contributions. And then lastly, when you use those contributions for medical purposes, they're tax free. So there's a triple tax savings benefit of investing in the HSA. And we'll look at that, that uh, the illustration here in a moment to really solidify the power of, of the triple tax savings. And then lastly, guys, Chevron makes contributions to the HSA. Um, depending on the plan type, individual or family, you can receive a, a contribution free from, from Chevron. The HCSA, Healthcare Savings Account, this is the FSA. You can only use this if you're on a non-high deductible health plan, which means the PPO, et cetera. You can make pre-tax contributions. However, this is the biggest caveat, and this is what people highly, commonly mistake in the HSA for. It is use it or lose it. So let's say you have a balance of $5,000. If you don't use that money by the end of the calendar year, and there's some wiggle room in there, you lose it. It evaporates, essentially. Chevron does not match. There are no contributions to be in the health care savings account. A little bit more, more about the contribution limits. So now Bob and Anna are on the high deductible health plan. We discussed with them the different contribution limits. If you're self only, 3,850 as of 2023. Family, the contribution limit is 7,750, right? And then if, if you're 55 or older, there's a catch up of $1,000 per individual, per, per spouse. So between Bob and Anna, because they're both 55, they can contribute 7,750 plus Bob's catch up plus Anna's catch up for a total of $9,750. And again, we talked about the Chevron contribution amounts. You can see based off the plan type, individual, individual plus one adult, et cetera, et cetera. The, here are the varying contribution types. Most common is the family. So just to summarize the benefits of the HSA, why do the HSA? One, the primary tax savings are in the form of the tax deductible contributions, right? You make a contribution, let's say you're in the family, you're Bob and Anna, you get almost a $10,000 tax savings each year. That money, if you invest it, grows tax-free, very similar to an IRA or your 401k. And then money that's taken out for qualified medical expenses are also tax-free. So it's a great investment vehicles for those who are in relatively good shape and can, can enroll in the high deductible plan and high income earners, meaning they have additional funds to set aside. This is a great tax-deferred vehicle to do that with. Okay, so I love illustrations. Let's look at one um, for the comparing the PPO and the high deductible health plan costs. Because oftentimes I get the question of, you know, how, how much is this going to cost me if, if if something bad happens to my my situation? So the annual cost for the PPO plan is four thousand seven hundred twenty eight. And how do we get that? Well, if we come over here, the monthly premiums are three ninety four. So we just annualize that to get the four seven two Eight. The Chevron high deductible plan, the annualized cost is 936, right? That's the monthly premiums annualized. 
So right off the bat, you can see on an annual basis, if you're in, if you're healthy, you're going to save about three thousand seven hundred ninety two dollars. I just did that math in my head. If you switch to the high deductible health plan cost. But let's say something happens and you need to go to the doctors and you need to you have an expense, you go to the emergency room or whatever. What you have to factor in the complete out of pocket cost, which includes the deductible. So as I mentioned, the deductible is three thousand dollars for the PPO and six thousand if you're in the family plan for the high deductible. So if you compare the two, your total out of pocket cost, if something were to happen, is about seven thousand seven hundred twenty eight versus six thousand nine hundred thirty six. So even if something happens to you guys, right, you're actually you're still saving money by being enrolled in the high deductible plan. Now, you might be thinking, like, why would I ever not be in the high deductible plan? Well, I'll say two things about that. One, the premium cost does vary. It's, it, it varies based off your situation. Um, and so what we pull data from Chevron's website, but I do encourage you to talk with your HR department to understand what those benefits, what the costs actually are. But this is pretty accurate. And two, you may not want to fork up $6,000 before your insurance kicks in versus $3,000 for the PPO. So depending on your cash flow situation, it might be more difficult to do that. But generally speaking, the high deductible plan is a great way if you're healthy to save money. Right. So we talked about this, um, the monthly premium for the PPO plan versus the monthly premium for the high deductible plan. The family plan is $78. Right. So one of the strategies that we recommended for Bob and Anna since they switched from that PPO to the high deductible plan is to start investing in the HSA, right? This was a new um, tool they weren't used to. And so the first question was how much? Well, if you recall, they were on the PPO plan, they were used to paying about $400 a month in premiums. Now they're paying 80. So what we recommended was to take the difference, call it 316 each month and start investing that, contributing that towards the HSA, okay? So here's a graphical representation of the difference, the monthly difference of 316. We said, okay, put that into a con into your HSA. So the annualized contributions would be about 3,792. So let's look at a graph of the of what can happen over time to your HSA. So this is a graphical representation. Um, 150,000 is, is the y-axis, the time horizons here on the x-axis. It assumes that they contribute $3,600, which is the difference, over 40 years, right? And we're going to invest that at 8%, which is which is pretty conservative. Just looking at the contribution, so 3,600 a, a year times 40, that's about $144,000 of contributions, okay? If we were to assume an 8% annual return, that HSA value over 40 years is approximately $1 million. Now, keep in mind, this is pre-tax. The contributions are pre-tax. The growth is pre-tax, et cetera. So there's not any, there's not what we call tax drag on these accounts. Let's say, for example, instead of putting this 3,600 into an HSA, we put it into a brokerage account with Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, et cetera. What's the difference? Well, let's assume a tax drag of say 25% each year. The brokerage account's balance at the end of 40 years is only $600,000. That's a huge difference between 1 million and 600,000. And what's driving that difference? It's, it's taxes. The benefit, if you are, like I said, a high income earner, you have extra funds to put aside each year, call it $10,000. We would recommend investing it in the most tax efficient vehicle possible. Uh, the HSA is a great alternative to putting it, say, just an average brokerage account, which is going to have tax drag over time. OK, so pulling back the onion a little bit, what are some additional HSA strategies? One, you could use the funds as needed. Two, we generally recommend holding enough cash in the HSA to match your annual deductible in case you need to uh, front some out-of-pocket costs. And then third, in order to really maximize the compound growth impact of your HSA, you really shouldn't touch the HSA for medical expenses. And what I mean by that is, um, let's say you go to the doctor's office and you have a $100 office visit. Instead of using your HSA to pay for the bill, pay for it out of pocket, save the receipts, and then say five, 10 years down the road, reimburse yourself from the HSA. 
Why would you do that? Because you're allowing the, the, the power of compound interest to be in your favor. If you're constantly touching the HSA, that's less income, that's less money that would, will compound over time. That's a very meticulous strategy. Not everybody does that, but it is an option if you want to truly optimize the HSA. Okay, and then with the FSA, so Trish and Ryan, if you recall, they're, we recommended switching to the PPO so they can invest in the FSA or contribute, I should say. The annual contribution limit is 2,850 and there is no match, okay? Again, the FSA is use it or lose it. So let's say you come to the end of the year and you haven't used all the balance in the account. Uh, Amazon actually offers this really cool feature um, see here the FSA or HSA eligible product drop down, which allows you to purchase goods that are HSA and FSA eligible. So I recommend folks, if you're coming near the end of the year and you need to use the balance to check out Amazon's option to, to, to pay for things so you're not losing the funds. Okay, let's pivot to short and long-term disability. So first off, what is disability insurance? Well, let's say you need to take a leave of absence from Chevron, whether to um, you're injured or you have a baby, so you need maternity leave, paternity leave, or you just need to take somebody, take care of somebody that you love, right? In that leave of absence, you, you still want to be compensated. You would need disability insurance to kind of fill in that gap. So the question is, do you need it and how much do you need? So let's go back to our examples with Bob. Anna and Tricia and Ryan. Bob has 25 years of service at Chevron, makes about $400,000 a year, and he's currently only covered under Chevron's provided coverage. Okay. And then another important feature about Bob and Anna is that they are not financially independent. And what do I mean by that? Well, they need to continue working. They can't retire and be financially free from an income. So they don't have enough saved up to retire. That's what we mean by financially independent. Tricia, uh, for example, is also been with Chevron for about 25 years, has a salary of $400,000, but she's on the Chevron provided coverage and the supplemental coverage. She is also financially independent. Let's take a moment to understand and contrast the differences between short and long-term disability. Short-term disability lasts up to 52 weeks, and it depends on your tenure with Chevron. It covers up to 100% and or 50% of your base pay, 100% covered by Chevron. This is a benefit that Chevron provides to all of its employees, and it starts the first day of your disability. Whereas long-term disability continues to up to 24 months once short-term disability ends. It covers up to 60% of your pay, and there's a portion that's covered by Chevron, and there's also an employee uh, supplemental plan. If, if you wanted to enroll in that, that would be a cost to you. And it starts either 180 days or uh, the end of short-term disability, whichever one is later. That's when long-term disability goes into effect. This is a table right from y'all's benefit books. You can see here, based off your years of service at Chevron, and the type of disability, whether it's on the job or off the job, how much Chevron will cover for you. So let's say, for example, you have 15 years or more of service and you have an off the job disability. Chevron will cover up to 26 weeks of pay at 100 percent and then the remaining 26 weeks at 50 percent of your pay. Long term disability, there's there's three types. There's basic, optional and then this what's called a restoration plan. The basic, which is covered by Chevron, covers up to 50% of your annual pay. The optional coverage uh, covers up to 60%. And then the restoration plan is a little nuanced. So for high income earners, and by high income earner, I mean if you make more than what's called the IRC limit, this year in 2023, it's $330,000. If you make more than that, the restoration plan could make sense for you. Right. It, it, that's when I would focus on the restoration plan. And we'll look at an example here in a moment to solidify these concepts. So going back to our example of Bob and Anna, Bob gets hurt um, and opts into his short term disability. He has 25 years of service, so he's eligible for 
uh, 52 weeks of pay, 26 weeks of full-time pay, and then 26 weeks of half-time pay. So based off his income, short-term disability will be about $300,000 for him. $300,000 is what he would get uh, versus the $400,000 base pay he's used to. Let's say Bob doesn't recover and then has to enroll in long-term disability. And keep in mind, he's only registered, he's only enrolled in the Chevron provided coverage. So under that example, first year, as we mentioned, he gets $300,000 of, of short-term disability. That's year one. Year two, his long-term disability kicks in and it's effectively $165,000. That's 50% of the of his income up to that three hundred and thirty thousand dollar threshold, so fifty percent of three hundred thirty thousand dollars is one sixty five. Okay, so let's look at an example of Trish Trisha getting hurt on the job. So as I as I mentioned, Trisha is enrolled in the Chevron provided and the supplemental benefits, so she gets supplemental coverage and the restoration plan. The first year of long-term disability, she would receive $190,000 of coverage. It's a 50% plus the additional 10 for 60% of income supplementation. In addition to that, she's also going to receive the restoration benefit, which is an additional $42,000 a year of long-term disability insurance. Can you compare $240,000 to $165,000 of what Bob is eligible for. That's an additional $75,000 of disability coverage by enrolling in what Chevron uh, provides, the supplemental coverage. So the main takeaways, guys, is to understand, um, one, are you, are you financially independent? Could you walk away from your job and not have to worry about working again? If you are, great, then you probably don't need long-term disability insurance. That's an that's a additional, uh, cost that you could save. If you're not quite there yet, if you're not financially independent and you're a high income earner, uh, high income earner we're defining as $400,000 in this example, then it could make sense to explore the supplemental options available at Chevron. Life insurance, okay? Uh, how much do you need? That's the number one question to ask yourself when deciding, should I enroll in life insurance? How much coverage do I need? And the first thing we wanna look at is what's provided to you. At Chevron, there's three different types. There's the basic, which is up to 2X, so two times your annual base pay. That's covered by Chevron. There's supplemental, which is an additional benefit you can purchase. You can purchase up to eight times your annual salary in addition to the two times that Chevron's providing for you. So that's a total of 10X your annual salary at up to $10 million. So, Taking a step back, the max coverage of life insurance that you can receive at Chevron is about $10 million, which is for the majority of people more than enough. There's also this dependent life insurance coverage. Um, if you wanted coverage on your spouse, you could do so, or your children. That's an employee paid benefit um, if that's something that you're interested in as well. Okay, so let's go back to our examples with Bob and Anna and Trisha and Ryan. Bob and Anna have about $1 million saved up. Their earnings are $400,000 and they spend about $150,000. They have about $800,000 of life insurance, which is the 2X of basic coverage that Chevron provides. Remember, they're not financially independent. If you look at their savings, a million dollars, they're spending $150,000. If they ever retired today, they would spend effectively all of their savings in less than 10 years. So when we met with Bob and Anna, we did recommend that they increase their life insurance coverage because they're not financially independent and $800,000 is not enough. Trisha and Ryan have about $4 million saved up and they spend 150. So remember we said that they are financially independent for based off their spending patterns, 4 million is enough to retire and be financially independent. And they had about $2 million of life insurance coverage, which means in total, they had 5X of the salary. So 3X of their salary is what they were paying for supplemental. After talking with Trisha and Ryan, understanding their goals, running a life insurance needs analysis, we determined they could actually drop the additional 3X of coverage 
because they didn't need it. They were financially independent, which allows them to drop the coverage and save the, the monthly premiums in, in their pockets. Okay. So the biggest takeaway here, guys, as it relates to life insurance is, are you financially independent? Um, if not, how much of life insurance do you need at this stage of your life? Because it changes um, in each stage. Another cool benefit for life insurance at Chevron is that it's what's called portable. If, for example, you were to leave Chevron and still needed life insurance, you could take it with you. Um, there's a cost to do so, and usually it's 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 not cheap. But if you run the numbers and determine that you still would like insurance post retirement, Chevron does provide you with that option. OK, so summarizing life insurance. Um, first step, determine what you need. Leverage what Chevron offers, basic um, and supplemental. We also recommend that you do some research to determine how much life insurance can you get outside of Chevron? What's the cost? Does it make so sense to uh, purchase a private policy versus utilizing Chevron supplemental coverage? And then get a plan in place and revisit it. Life changes, right? So just because you made a plan five years ago doesn't mean it's still applicable five years later. So revisit the plan regularly to determine if you still have the best plan in place. And then lastly, guys, talk to your financial advisor about what your options are. Ultimately, this is complex stuff, um, and your financial advisor should be able to kind of walk you through what's the best situation for you. The fiduciary difference, guys, I, I mentioned this, we don't sell insurance. We look at your situation and advise on the best path forward. Um, only 12% of firms in our industry are structured like ours that act in your best interest at all times. Um, the other 88% are, are basically salesmen, right? They could be pitching products like selling insurance or putting mutual funds in your portfolio that do revenue sharing or other sort of kickbacks like that. Um, so when you're looking at who should you hire as your financial advisor, um, the, the fiduciary piece does make a huge difference. What does this mean for you guys? Uh, we talked a lot about the benefits and how to optimize them in light of your financial plan. At Wills Johnson and Associates, as I've mentioned before, we act in your best interest at all times. We have an in-depth understanding of your company benefits, not just Chevron's medical options, life insurance, awesome disability options, but your 401k, your pension. We make sure that you're making the right elections, right choices, so you're not leaving any money on the table. In addition, we also have an emphasis on tax. Taxes is a big part of your financial plan. So here at Willis Johnson, we also can file and prepare your tax return so that we're making sure you're getting the most out of, um, out of the tax piece as well. Don't forget, guys, if you have any questions uh, or comments, please include them in the pop-up survey following this webinar. A member of our team will follow up with you with a detailed answer to, to your questions. And you could also follow me or subscribe to us on LinkedIn uh, or Facebook for more content and informational pieces such as this. And again, I mentioned a lot of this is complex, guys. If, if you're wanting to know what next step you should take, uh, we do offer complimentary first time meetings with folks. So if you're interested in reaching out to us to understand more about your company benefits, understand the tax opportunities that you may have available to you. Um, and also we provide a kind of comprehensive investment portfolio review. Please feel free to reach out and we'll schedule a complimentary meeting with you guys.